Welcome to the next lecture on the course introduction to R software. You may recall that in the earlier lectures we started a discussion on some statistical function and we had discussed different types of statistical function which are available in the base package of R to compute frequency, measures of central tendency, measures of dispersion and so on. So, we will try to continue with the same discussion and uh, we would like to know something about box plots, skewness and curtises in this lecture. So, we try to start our lecture. You have seen earlier that uh, when we talked about the descriptive statistics, then there are different types of things which can be computed. We had computed different types of functions like as minimum value of the observation, maximum value of the observation, different types of quantiles like as quartile, decile, percentile and we had considered say some graphics also. Now, the question is that when we are trying to compare two different data sets, then it would not be a very good idea to compare them only on the basis of one characteristics. For example, it will not be a good idea to, to say since the mean of first the data set is higher than the mean of second data set, so it is a good data set. Or in case if I individually consider that the variance of the first data set is greater than the variance of data set 2, then which one is preferable. Actually in general all these features should be considered together. In order to do that thing, first option is that we try to compute all the things individually like as minimum, maximum different types of quantiles for each of the data set and then we try to compare them to make a final conclusion. In R, there is a function what we call as summary function and this function helps us and gives all these values from the same function. You may also recall that in the earlier lecture, uh, we also talked about the summary function and at that time I had told you that uh, uh, we will be considering it in the future lecture. So, this is the moment when we are going to consider the summary function. So, uh, there is a command here S U W M A R Y and this command gives us the information on the minimum maximum first quartile, second quartile which is actually median and third quartile from the same function. And the syntax of this function is summary and inside the argument we have to write the data vector. So, let us try to take example over here and try to see how it operates. So, I simply try to consider here a data set of 15 observations and these observations are on the marks of students which are uh, combined here inside a vector marks using the command c. Now, when I try to operate the summary function, it gives me here summary of marks and you can see here this type of outcome comes. First value is the minimum value. So, it is saying that the minimum value is 29 that you can see from here this is this value. And then it is trying to compute the first quartile, second quartile which is actually the median and then it is trying to consider the third quartile also and fourth quartile is obviously the entire data set. So, here you can see it is giving us first quartile is 46.5, second quartile that is the median is 63, third quartile is 79.5. And it also computes the mean that is the arithmetic mean of the data set and it also find out the maximum which is here 96, right you can see over here. So, this summary function you can see here this 
is giving us all this information here in a single shot and this is the screenshot of the same thing. Now, what is the advantage? Suppose I try to take here another data set and I call it say here marks 1. What I have done in the same data set, I have added some extreme observation you can see here 628, 812 and so on 795. 986 and so on and I try to obtain the summary function once again on the data vector marks 1. So, the summary function gives us this outcome minimum, first quartile, median, mean, third quartile and maximum. And in the last example, we had the vector marks for which we had obtained the summary function like this one. Now, I can compare the minimum of the two data set, first quartile of the two data set, median of the two data set, mean of the two data set, third quartiles of the two data set and maximum of the two data set. And this will give us a sort of uh, numerical comparison among all the values. For example, I can see here that 29 and 29 which are the minimum values in both the data set, they remain the same. But first quartile is changed, median is changed, mean is changed, third quartile is changed and maximum is also changed because you can see here, here is the maximum this thing. So, this uh, summary function helps us in uh, taking a conclusion by looking at uh, these uh, 6 values together, right. And now, let us try to do this thing on the R console also. So, first I try to write down my, here my marks. So, now let us try to do this on the R console and first we try to paste the marks vector. So, you can see here, here is the marks and now when I try to find out the summary function, summary of marks it gives me this thing something like this. And when I try to find out the summary for the marks 1, then I can see here that the marks 1 is like this and uh, summary function of marks 1 gives us this thing. So, you can see here this is the outcome of the summary function from the marks and this is from the outcome of the summary function from the marks 1. So, this is the same outcome which is given over here, right. Now, let us come back to our slide and try to consider another topic. We have seen that in the summary function we are getting all the numerical values, the numerical values of mean, median, first quartile, second quartile, third quartile, minimum, maximum and so on. And by comparing those numerical values we can have a fair idea that what is really happening in the two data sets and we can compare them. But do not you think that this will be a very convenient thing if all this information can be represented graphically? Why? What is the, the advantage of this graphic representation? Now, you have seen uh, different types of symbol for example, say smiley. For example, in case if I try to make here two faces like this one and here I write simply like this and here I write simply like this just by looking at the two faces you can see that one face is representing the happy face and another face is not so happy. So, this is the advantage of graphical representation actually. And here you can see means everything is there means you can also look at their eyes something like this or here if I try to make different types of eyes. So, you can look in the say mouth, eyes and ear also here the ears are like this. So, you can compare everything just in a single shot. The same concept is translated to a graphic called as box plot. Box plot is a graph which uh, summarizes all this information whatever we have got using the summary like as median, quartiles, minimum, maximum, mean everything in a same graphic. And this looks like this over here you can see here this is the box plot 
right. Why this is called as a box? Because you can see that here is a box, this is here a box. So, in this picture, this is called actually a box and this is called a whisker and this is also called as whisker and that is why sometimes this is also called as say box whisker plot that is another name of the box plot. Now we try to understand what this box plot is trying to indicate. You can see here first we try to go inside the box. There is one line here, one line here and one line here. So, let me call line number 1, line number 2 and line number 3. These three lines that is the first and third line as the sides of the box and line number 2 is in the box they are trying to indicate the quartiles. For example, line number 1 is indicating the value of first quartile. Line number 2 that is inside the box that is indicating the second quartile, the value of the median. And line number 3 is indicating the third quartile that is the value of the third quartile from a data set. And similarly here two more values, one is here minimum say line number 4 and say here another is here say line number 5 say here maximum. So, this line number 4 here this is denoting the minimum value of the data and line number 5 is indicating the maximum value of the data and this different that is the length of the whisker is indicating that how far is the minimum value from the first quartile and the line number 5 here that is indicating how far is the maximum value from the third quartile. You can also decide what is the difference between third and second quartile, what is the difference between first and second quartile or even what is the difference between first and third quartile. So, if you try to see the difference between first and third quartile, this difference is nothing but your interquartile range. This gives you an idea of interquartile range that we had computed by the function IQR. So, you can see here that this box plot is a graphic that is trying to give us various type of information under the same plot. And in order to draw a box plot, the command in R is simple B O X P L O T box plot and inside the argument you have to give the name of the data vector only. For example, let us try to uh, take the same example that we did earlier that I try to take here a uh, data vector here marks and we try to create the box plot. So, you can see here I have used here box plots of say marks and then it is trying to give us like this, right. So, you can see here this is giving us the maximum value, this is giving us the minimum value and this value is the first quartile, this is my second quartile and th this is my here third quartile and you can read their values from here. You can see this is the value here, this is the value here and this is the value here, this is the value here, this is the value here. Right, but reading the values is not uh, that much interesting in the box plot. It is more helpful when we try to compare two different data sets. So, what I try to do in the next slide is that I try to consider the second data set that we considered marks 1 and I try to compare the box plots of marks 1 and marks. So, you can see here that in the means earlier vector here marks there are no extreme values means all values are say relatively 
is scattered around the mean. But in Mach 1, these values are quite far away. For example, a lower value is something like 34, 41 and the maximum value is or the upper values are something like say 628, 795. So, now I want to compare these two data sets. So, I try to uh, first uh, make the box plot of the Max 1 which is given here and then I also try to paste the box plot of the Max vector and now you, you can see I can compare. Here you can see this value here is 90 whereas the here this value is 1000. And you can see here that the minimum value are remaining the nearly the I mean same, but uh, this uh, first quartile is here, it, it is here, second quartile is something like this, third quartile is something like this and this length of whiskers are also deviating. Here the length of whisker is this like this, like this, but here you have to be careful that it is not only the length, but you also have to see the magnitude. The magnitude on this y axis, they are also differing a lot. For example, in the box plots of marks, the values are 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 and so on. Whereas, in the box plot of marks number 1, it is say 0, 200, 400, 600 and so on. Right. So, by looking at these two box plots, you can compare the two data sets with their basic characteristic like as minimum, maximum, quartiles and so on. So, why not to do it on the see here our console and try to see what do we get. Well, we already have entered the data max and max 1. So, I do not need to enter it here, but I simply try to go with here box plot of say here max. So, you can see here this comes out to be like this. And now, I try to compute here the create the box plot of max 1. You can see this will change. Try to observe on the box plot. And this is the same screenshot which I have given earlier. So, anyway, so we come back to our slides. Now, we try to take another topic. You may recall that when we started a discussion on descriptive statistics, so we have uh, taken four topics measures of central tendency, measures of uh, variation, the third was structure and shape of the data, and fourth was the relationship study. So, we already have done the measures of central tendency and uh, variation. So, now we come to the third aspect and where we want to study the structure and shape of the data and we want to see its tendency. What do we mean by this? There can be various features inside the data. So, here uh, we are going to uh, study on two aspects. What is symmetry? that is measured by skewness and another property is kurtosis. And after that, we will take up this topic also that how to study the relationships through correlation etcetera. So, now we try to understand what do we mean by these two characteristics which are characterized by the terms skewness and kurtosis. Right. You can see here uh, in the left panel on this side, we have here three types of curves. Let me call it here curve number here 1, curve number here 2 and curve number here 3, so that you can follow me easily. First, we try to see in the curve number 2. You can see here this curve starts from here and goes like this and you can see here this is more or less symmetric. Symmetric around what? This value, which is essentially the, we can assume that this is the mean value. Now, in case if you try to compare this figure number 2 with figure number 1, the figure number 2, if you try to plot over the same screen, same figure, this will look like this. So, you can see that this hump part that is now shifted on the left hand side. And similarly, if you try to compare the figure number 2 and 3, you can see here that in figure number 3, a symmetry curve would have been like this one. 
So, you can see here that here the mean value is shifted to here and this hump is shifted from, from center to the right hand side. So, this is essentially the feature which is characterized by skewness S K E W N E double S. Skewness is a measure of symmetry. Whenever we have a data set, we would like to know whether all the values are symmetrically distributed or not. Symmetrically distributed around the say for example, mean say half of the values are on the left hand side of the mean and half of the values are on the right side of the mean. Then I would say my data is nearly symmetric. So, this is the character that we try to study here and in this case say in the case number 2, we call it there is no skewness and we say that the curve is symmetric and on the same lines when we go to the figure number here 1, where the hump is shifted on the left hand side, this is here, we call that this curve is positively skewed. And the opposite happens in the figure number 3, where the hump is shifted on the right hand side and we see here that the curve is negatively skewed. So, this is the characteristics of skewness, the skewness can be say symmetric that means no skewness or it can be positively skewed or say negatively skewed. For example, if I take a simple example, suppose I try to measure the number of vehicles crossing a particular say square or a particular point, then you will see at about 10 o'clock or say 9 o'clock in the morning, which is a office hours many people are going to the office, then maximum number of people are crossing that point say between say 9 and 10 am. But about say 1 pm or 2 pm, most of the people are inside the office, then the number of vehicles crossing that point will be very, very less. So, for example, if you try to look in the figure number 1, if I say this is 8 am and then it is something like here 10 am and then this is something like here say here 2 pm, this is my time. So, you can see here that the number of vehicles they increase from 8 am till 10 am and after that they start decreasing. So, this type of data feature can be studied by the concept of skewness. Similarly, we have another aspect that is called kurtosis. What is kurtosis? Now, we try to look into these three graphics on the right hand side and we can just call them as graphic number A, graphic number B and graphic number here C. So, first we try to see into the graphic number here B. You can see here this is a symmetric curve and it has a hump, hump is here, this is somewhere here. Now, there can be two options. This hump can be more than this or this hump can be say smaller than this. This characteristic of looking at the hump of the curve that is studied through the concept of kurtosis. Right. So, now I have to define three aspects. One, a standardized value of say kurtosis or the property of kurtosis and then two other values or two other names which are denoting that the hump is lower than the curve or upper than the curve. So, this concept of defining whether the hump is lower or say upper that is actually based on the normal distribution. We are not doing it here in this course, but uh, you can look into any statistics books normal distribution is a very popular distribution and we try to compare the hump of say curves with respect to normal distribution. In order to understand this thing more clearly, why not do we draw here a curve which is so called the 
normal curve. Now there are three options. Let us try to look at this hump. One option is that this hump can be lower than this thing. This is in the lower direction. So the, this is another characteristic. And another option is this. This hump can be more than this somewhere here. So this is bigger than this one. So this is called as a mesocortic. This is called as say here platycortic. and this is called here as a leptocortic. These are the three nomenclature to define the property of kurtosis. When we talk of this mesocortic, mesocortic is nothing, this is the kurtosis of normal distribution. Right. So, this is how we uh, try to classify the distribution of the data with respect to hump. We simply try to plot them and we try to study the hump through the property of kurtosis. One will be called as platycurtic, another will be called as mesocurtic and another is called as leptocurtic as we have discussed. Now the question is that by looking at the curve you cannot really decide much. We need to quantify it both the skewness and kurtosis. So, in order to quantify the departure from symmetry or the nature of hump, we have coefficients and these are called as coefficient of skewness and coefficient of kurtosis. So, we try to understand how they are defined and based on that we will try to see how they can be computed in our software. So, first we come to skewness this coefficient of skewness measures the shift of the hump of frequency curve either it is on the left hand side or on the right hand side. And based on that suppose we have got some data values x1, x2, xn then the coefficient of skewness is defined like this and this is usually denoted by gamma 1 by this symbol. And here you can see it is a very simple thing this is simply trying to compute the sum of cubes of the deviation of the observation from their mean. These xi's are my observation, this is my mean and then it is trying to take the deviation of each observation from the mean and it is trying to make its cube and then try to take the average of these cubes. And similarly in the denominator also we have a similar thing. So, actually this quantity gives us an idea that whether the hump is on the left hand side or right hand side. How? That, that we will try to see. But before that, similar to coefficient of skewness, we have the coefficient of kurtosis also. This coefficient of kurtosis actually measures the peakedness of the frequency curve. Right. And this is also a similarly similar measure. But here we are trying to take the deviation of every observation from the mean and then we are trying to take its fourth power and then try to take the average. And similarly in the denominator also we are defining a similar quantity and this uh, measure is denoted as usually as a gamma 2 and this value of gamma 2 lies between minus 3 and plus 3. Now what is the meaning of this coefficient of skewness and coefficient of kurtosis that is gamma 1 and gamma 2 let us try to see from this figure. So, in case if I have say symmetric curve, say let us call uh, give them the same name as we have done it earlier. You can see here I have given the name 1, 2, 3 and ABC. So, we write the same nomenclature here 1, 2, say here 3 and here A, here B and here C. So, first we try to look into the left hand panel with the figures 1, 2 and 3. First we try to look into figure number 2. Here the curve is symmetric. So in that case, in case if we try to compute the value of gamma 1, this will come out to be 0. So any value of gamma 1 close to 0 will indicate that the distribution of the data is symmetric or say nearly symmetric. In case if gamma 1 comes out to be greater than 0 as in the figure number 1, then that would indicate 
that the hump is shifted on the left hand side. I can draw here this line, this is the mean. So, this is shifted on the left hand side and in this case the gamma 1 will come out to be greater than 0. Any value of gamma 1 greater than 0 will indicate that the curve is positively skewed. That means the hump is shifted on the left hand side from the mean value. And similarly, when we try to look into the figure number 3, in this case the gamma 1 value is coming out to be less than 0. And in this case, we call that the curve is negatively skewed. This means that when I am trying to compute the coefficient of skewness on the basis of given sample of data and if the value comes out to be negative, then I can conclude that the hump of the curve is shifted on the right hand side and it is something like this where more frequency is concentrated on the right hand side of the curve. Whereas, in the figure number 1, more frequency is concentrated on the left hand side of the curve. Whereas, in the second case, the observations are symmetrically distributed around the mean. So, the computed value of gamma 1, whether it is 0, greater than 0 or smaller than 0 gives us an idea whether the curve is positively skewed, symmetric or negatively skewed. Similarly, now let us try to look into the figures A, B and C. So, in order to know whether my uh, data distribution is platycurtic, mesocurtic or leptocurtic, we simply try to compute the value of gamma 2. Now, I have 3 choices. Gamma 2 will lie between minus 3 and plus 3. So, one choice is this that gamma 2 can be equal to 3 as in figure number B. So, in case if I am getting gamma 2 equal to 3, that is indicating that my curve is mesocurtic that is the hump of the curve or the peakedness of the curve is the same as the peakedness of a normal distribution. And when gamma 2 comes out to be smaller than 3 as in figure number A, then we say that the frequency distribution is platycurtic like this. And similarly, when the gamma 2 value comes out to be greater than 3 as in the figure number C, then we say that my curve is leptocurtic. So, this is how we try to define the coefficient of skewness and curtises and this is how we use them. So, now the question is how to compute this coefficient of skewness and curtises in R software. So, in order to compute them in the R software, first we need to install a package. This is not uh, built in in the base package. So, in order to compute it, we try to consider a package movements m o m e n t s and we try to first install it and then we try to upload it by writing library movements and after this you simply have to write down say skewness and inside the arguments whatever is the data vector and then kurtosis k u r t o s i s and inside the arguments you need to write down the data or the data vector. So, skewness will compute the coefficient of skewness that we discussed earlier and similarly the kurtosis will also compute the coefficient of kurtosis uh, that we discussed earlier. Right. Okay. So, now I try to take this example that we did earlier. So, I simply try to take the same data vector here which I considered earlier and I try to simply write skewness of marks and kurtosis of here marks. You can see here that this value is coming out to be negative and whereas this value is smaller than 3. Right. So, based on that what does this mean? This is saying that this is negatively skewed and what about this? This is smaller than 3. Smaller than 3 means what? look here, this is platycurtic. So, I can say here that in this case, this is platycurtic and here is the screenshot of the same thing. So, now I would request you that you try this example yourself on your own computer and also try to take the data set marks 1 
and try to compute the coefficients of skewness and curtesis yourself and try to see how do they differ. You will clearly come to know that what is really happening with the skewness and curtesis of the data. So, I stop here and in the next lecture we will come up with some new topics. Till then you practice and we say goodbye.